Hello everybody, my name is Neil and today I will be helping you to learn how to analyze and describe bar graphs in detail. Okay, more specifically we'll be focusing on this task which is from IELTS practice tests plus one Pearson Longman page number 21. Okay, so let's just read this prompt in detail. The graph below shows carbon dioxide emission in several areas of the world. Okay, so here we have carbon dioxide emission, CO2 emissions, okay, 10 tons per person per year, 1995. Okay, and then in several areas of the world. Why? Because we have several areas of the world here. Okay, and then summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Okay, so exam examiner wants us to focus only on the main features. He doesn't want us to describe every single country or every single region given here. He wants us to focus only on the main features. Okay. Now, um, first of all, it's very important to write the introduction. Okay, so how can we do that? Okay, let's just read and analyze it together. The bar graph compares and contrasts the data relating to different amounts of carbon site CO2 emissions produced per person in nine regions in 1995. So basically, I have just paraphrased this prompt. Okay, so how have I done it? Okay, first of all, I have mentioned that uh, this is the bar graph, right? That's why the bar graph compares and contrasts. When you're comparing something, you're focusing on similar features. And when you're contrasting, you're focusing on the differences. Okay. The data relating to different amounts of carbon dioxide emissions. Okay, so we have different figures here. Okay, and therefore I mentioned that um, relating to different amounts of carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide emissions produced per person in nine regions. Okay, so I have counted the number of regions. Okay, and so therefore I've written in nine regions in 1995. Okay, so um, it's very important to be able to paraphrase uh, the task, okay, and you don't want to copy it. So, for example, here we have the graph, and here I've just written the bar graph, okay. So then the examiner wants us to make comparisons, so make comparisons where relevant, okay, and therefore I've written compares and contrasts the data, okay. Uh, because it's obvious that we're focusing on different figures and numbers. So we're talking about, um, okay, data. Okay, and that's why data related to different amounts of carbon, di uh, carbon dioxide emissions. So uh, that's what you can also do in the introduction. Okay, um, and here, as you can see, I don't have um, lots of information in the introduction. I have only one clear sentence. Okay, good. Then now let's move on. The next important step is to provide the examiner uh, with a clear picture of what's going on here in this graph. So we have to focus on general trends here. So we can focus on the highest uh, points and the lowest points in the graph. Okay, so let's just see how I, I've done it. As can be seen, while an average person produced the highest proportion of CO2 per year in North America, one living in Asia Pacific contributed the lowest amount. Okay, so uh, this key phrase, as can be seen, indicates that we are talking about this graph overall. Okay, you can also write overall, but here I have decided to write the phrase as can be seen. Why? Because I'm using a complex grammar here. I'm using the model verb can plus um, the passive voice be seen. Okay, also I'm using uh, a complex sentence here by combining two parts of the sentence using the word while. Okay, while and then now I'm contrasting data. I said while and then an average person produced the highest proportion of CO2 per year in North America. Now if you look at the, uh, the graph and if you look at North America, it's obvious that um, 
each individual produced the largest proportion of CO2, okay, and then one living in Asia and Pacific, if you look at this carefully, um, contributed the lowest amount. So I'm focusing on the largest figure and on the lowest figure. Okay, also it's very important to paraphrase as many words as possible. So for example, uh, before I've mentioned an average person, right? And before uh, and after this I said um, one living in Asia and Pacific. So instead of writing an average person, okay, I have paraphrased and that's just said one. Okay, also uh, produced and then contributed. So you see I have just paraphrased. Okay, and then um, in proportions of the highest proportion of CO2 per year and then uh, um, later I just mentioned the word amount okay because so the idea is try to use as many synonyms as possible in your sentences okay now let's move on now we just need to write the next paragraph where we need to provide the examiner with specific figures and numbers so more specifically almost one-fifth of the total co2 was released by an average person in the usa at 19.34 tons okay so more specifically why because we want to provide the examiner with more specific details okay almost one-fifth of the total co2 was released by an average person in the usa if you look at uh, the situation in north america okay it's obvious that um, this figure is the highest here in this graph okay and also if you look at the figure it says 19.34 which is almost 20 okay and uh, 20 means one fifth and i indicated this uh, fact here okay and then of the total co2 it's very important to say that of what of the total co2 okay and then i'm using the passive voice here was released by an average person in the usa and then um comma so it's very important to use comma here and then at and then show the exact figure at 1934 tons okay so some students forget to um, include the measurement it's very important it's very important to say tons kilograms meters and so forth Good. Now let's just move on. Uh, those individuals who were living in OECD, Central and Eastern, and Europe and uh, Western Europe were the second largest producers of CO2, with the figures ranging from 8.58 to 10.97 tons per person. Okay, so those individuals who were living in OECD okay so we are talking about the second region given okay and then central um, and Eastern Europe okay so this is uh, area number three um, and Western Europe so this is region number four were the second largest producers of CO2 now, if you look at this carefully, I have decided to put all of these three regions into one lot, okay, into one, um, I, okay, I have decided just to merge them, to combine them, because it's easier to describe, because we don't have too much time to do it, plus we, uh, we can't focus on each single country and therefore I decided just to combine them and describe them together okay and they say we're the second largest producers why the second because North America was the first largest producer now we're talking about um, all of these three regions combined okay and then with the figures ranging from eight point 58 to 10.97 tons per person so the idea is um i just want to show the range i want to show the lowest figures here low the lowest figure here and the highest figure here and therefore i just written with the figures ranging from 
0.58, okay, which is uh, the smallest one here, the lowest, and then to 10.97 tons per person, okay. So you see that uh, I have uh, shown this ra range, okay, the spectrum, the lowest figure and then the highest figure. Okay, so that's exactly what you can do. So what's the strategy? First, you focus on the largest figure, and then you find several countries, you combine them, and then you show the uh, lowest range there and then the highest um, figure there. Okay, so that's what you can do. Right, let's move on. An average person in all of these three areas produced almost half as much CO2 as one living in North America. America. Okay, so the idea is uh, an average person in all of these three areas, we know what kind of areas we're talking about, one, two, three, okay, so let's just say and produce almost half as much CO2 as one living in North America. So the idea is, uh, if you just look at OECD, right, so the figure is 10.97, okay, which is um, <clears throat> 10 or 11 or something and if you look at North America it's 1934 and if you look at the difference it's almost half right like 50 percent so and then therefore again we are comparing an average person in all of these three countries with an average person living in North America and we say that um, an average person living in all of these three countries produced uh, almost half as much CO2 as one living in North America. So that's that's exactly what the examiner wants to see. Okay, he wants to see this analysis in your graph, not just just describing this graph. All right, let's move on. <clears throat> the lowest amounts of CO2 emissions were recorded in non. OECD countries, Latin America and Asia Pacific, where the figures were under three tons per person. Okay, now I'm focusing on the lowest figures. So the lowest amounts of CO2 emissions were recorded in non-OECD countries. Okay, so um, now we are, we are analyzing and looking at the first region and you can just see that it's very, very small okay it has a very small number a very low figure which is uh, 240 okay and then um, Latin America now if you just look at Latin America okay and um, Caribbean again um, uh, each person produced a very small amount of carbon dioxide okay and then Asian Pacific okay it's again it's clear that um, the figure is only 2.31 again you see that I'm trying to combine them all okay okay and then what where the figures were under three tons okay in this case under means less than three tons per person okay so what have I done I have shown the lowest figures the lowest amounts of uh, carbon dioxide emissions produced by each individual okay so once again, what's the strategy? The strategy is focus on the largest one, focus on the second largest figures, and then find some other countries. Again, group them all together and indicate um, uh, the figure. And if you just look at this here, we're under three tons, right? Why? Because you, you basically find the highest figure and then it's like all of them were no more than this figure. Okay, now let's move on. Interestingly, the total amount of CO2 produced per person in all of these three regions was almost equivalent to, other, uh, to the amount of CO2 produced by an average person in Central and Eastern Europe at approximately 10 tons. Okay, so interestingly, the total amount of CO2 produced per person in all of these three regions, we know what kind of regions we have mentioned, okay, was almost equivalent to. The expression was equivalent to means equal to. To, okay, the same as of CO2 produced by an average person in Central and um, Eastern Europe. Okay, why? Okay, um, the idea is if you just summarize, right? If you just add up all the figures of all the countries that we have mentioned, and if you even if you just take this total figure, and if you compare this figure with the figure for uh, Central and Eastern Europe, you can see that they are 
kind of the same all right so that's exactly again what you want to do and that's all okay i i hope that you have learned how to describe a bar graph okay um i hope that you have learned how to focus on the highest figure and then again find some countries group them all together and say that all of them belong to the second category because they produced the second largest amount of carbon dioxide okay and then what and then i hope that you've learned how to again find the lowest uh, figures in the graph okay by finding several countries putting all them together okay and then show um, them the way they affect the other uh, regions like try to summarize try to show and compare uh, these figures thank you very much i hope that you have enjoyed this lesson and i wish you good luck and hope that you will be able to pass the exam well take care